Hello and welcome to the second part of the lecture about Monte Carlo integration. My name is Adam Zellerek. As always, let's start with an overview. First, we will talk about bad sampling. That is, when a certain sampling strategy produces a lot of variance in the result. In a rendering, this is then visible as noise. After that, we will look into multiple important sampling. This is a method to combine several sampling strategies in order to reduce this variance. Here we see an example of bad sampling, over here. On the bottom you see a rough material and on the top a uh, glossy material, which is harder to sample. It's generally harder to sample using this uh, light source sampling strategy. This is the same strategy that we saw in the light lecture. And you can see that it's uh, bad even when we increase the number of samples even further increasing it to 16,000, it's still uh, noisy. So clearly, this uh, sampling strategy has a very hard time to deal with this situation. Let's go back to uh, a 1D case in order to understand what's happening. In here, we have the function that we want to integrate. And this is the important sampling of that function. You can see that function doesn't go, the blue function doesn't go to zero, while the important sampling uh, has a very low probability. What then happens are these spikes. When the sampling probably, probability of a certain sample is very low, yet the integrand has a significant contribution, um, this produces the spikes. The probability can become very low. And so something significant divided by something very small gives us a large value. This is unbiased, but it produces a lot of variance. When we increase the sample count uh, to something even larger, the spikes become insane. This is because with a very low probability, from time to time, we will generate these samples that have a very low probability. And so the spikes grow with the number of samples. Therefore, even when we increase the number of trials, uh, this doesn't help uh, even when we average. And here we can see on the x-axis the number of trials, while on the um, y-axis we see the estimate. So this is already this average, where the n grows in here, and you can see uh, that from time to time we will have these very large spikes and those are problematic during rendering. So bad sampling is when f is large or at least significant and the probability of a certain sample is very low. Next we will go to MIS. So this is the strategy or the method to reduce this type of problem. And uh, it's reduced when we can combine several sampling strategies. In here, we have a uniform sampling strategy and the important sampling strategy from before. For 3D renderings, uh, we also have several sampling strategies. In here, we sample the light, but it's also possible to sample the material. And sampling the material produces a little error for this case because when we have a glossy material, it's better to sample the material, while on a rough surface, it's better to sample the light. And this is the result when we combine both strategies. We will see now how to combine them. But let's start with what we have seen in the previous part with a simple Monte Carlo um, estimate. Fi, this i, denotes several sampling strategies. And this is the estimate for a certain sampling strategy. As we can see here, the expectation of this estimator is the integral. So this means that the estimator is unbiased. And we have several of these estimators and all of them are unbiased. So then a naive approach to combine those uh, estimators would be to compute the average of them. And since each one of them is unbiased, the average is unbiased again. This is due to the linearity of the expectation operator. We can do a bit better 
by uh, computing a weighted average. A weighted average, if it's um, if it should uh, stay unbiased, needs to the weights to sum up to one. And what we can do here, we can expand this estimator, like here, and we can pull in this weight inside this inner sum. This uh, expectation here is unbiased. So when we combine it this way, it will be unbiased again. We can do even better by pulling uh, this factor inside the uh, expectation and uh, it can be it can depend even on the samples. Uh, this might be a bit hard to wrap your head around, but think about it this way. Say uh, this n, so this is the number of samples per strategy, is 1. So this goes away. And uh, say, by pure luck, all of these samples, x, i, now it's 0 because this is 1, are all the same. So for each strategy, we have the same sample, just by pure luck. In that case, it's clear that this will uh, sum up to 1, because this is how we defined it. And therefore, this uh, estimator will be unbiased. But, and this is the gist of MIS, it will stay unbiased even when each strategy produces a different sample. Okay, and here we see the multi-sample estimator taken directly from Eric Veach's PhD thesis. You can read it up. And the expectation of this estimator is again our integral that we want to compute. And those are the conditions. The first one we saw before. Uh, it only applies when f of x uh, is not zero. But this is not very limiting because if f of x is zero, this whole thing becomes zero. So it doesn't matter a lot. The next one, uh, the weight should be zero whenever the probability is zero. As before, our weight was defined uh, by one over the number of sampling strategies. And uh, this at first seems a bit limiting, but ex actually it's very good. Because the previous sampling strategies, we said that they are unbiased. So all the x that have a contribution would have to have a certain probability. So this is not limiting and it works. So the, the sanity, uh, sanity check is okay. However, it's even better because we can use this weighting and it's supposed to be zero whenever this is zero to combine several sampling strategies that are not capable of producing an unbiased result. So in case a certain sampling strategy doesn't produce certain samples, we can just put the weight to zero and the other sampling strategies would take over. So this is an extension, but it's very good for us. So to wrap up, we can use the MIS even when we have uh, several sampling strategies that uh, don't produce an unbiased uh, result uh, each on their own. Okay, what are choices for this weighting? It can be constant 1 over n. This is uh, what our sanity check said just before, and this is the naive approach of just averaging over all of the sampling strategies. It can also be 1 or 0 depending on the x. This is also used in rendering, and we will uh, see later some examples in the path tracing lecture. But in the 1D case, just imagine that you are using one sampling strategy if, a, uh, if x is smaller than 0, and another sampling strategy if x is uh, greater or equal to 0. So depending on where we are in the domain, we have different sampling strategies. And now let's go to the balance heuristic. This is the real powerful thing. Eric Veach proved that uh, when you use this heuristic, uh, your error will always be within certain bounds of the optimal strategy, of the best strategy that could be possibly taken. Okay, so what we see here, we have the probability of the current strategy divided by the sum of the probabilities uh, of producing the same sample of all the other strategies. So let's look at our conditions from before. It should sum up to 1. This is clearly the case because when you sum up all the 
uh, weights for the different strategies, you will have the same sum as you have on the bottom, you will also have here on the top. And so um, uh, this will produce one. What about the other thing? Uh, weights uh, zero whenever the probability is zero. This is also clearly the case because uh, this will become zero divided by something, it's always uh, zero. Okay, and we will use this balance uh, heuristic uh, shortly in order to uh, show you a practical example. And next, the power heuristic. It is better uh, if uh, there is one strategy which produces low variance. And similar to this thing on top, it also observes these uh, conditions. Okay. Cat, my head is all mushy. Can't you give me a practical example? Yes, I can. So we uh, will have an integrand f of x and several estimators f. We use the balance heuristic. We have m sampling strategies and n samples. Okay, so this is already the algorithm. For uh, each sample, we pick a distribution with probability pj. And uh, this is uh, compared to what we had before where we uh, drew a fixed number of samples per strategy. This is uh, why it's divided by the number of samples per strategy. Now we have a fixed number of samples, overall samples, and uh, we choose one of the sampling strategies with this probability. Then we draw a sample from it, we compute this value, which is the estimator for the current sampling strategy, and uh, the balance heuristic is already built in. Then we sum up, like we did before in uh, Monte Carlo. We divide by the number of samples and we are done. Okay, let's have a closer look at this one. Uh, before, we said this uh, is supposed to be our f. Uh, we have the f over the probability and we multiply with the weight. This comes from, from the balance heuristic and we can see that those, those are reduced and this is what I said before. Okay, what else? How to choose the probabilities pj? And uh, another result of Eric Veach was that you can't do much better, so it will be within a certain bound of the optimal strategy if you choose a uniform discrete distribution over all your sampling strategies. Okay. And another way to look at this is that we are generating samples with the joint distribution um, of this. Hence, we are just computing f over the joint probability with this new PDF. This is just another way to look at the same thing. And this produces an unbiased estimate, just like regular Monte Carlo. And okay, what about the results? So here we have um, plotted the sample weight f over the probability over 100 trials. And you can see we don't have the spikes that we saw before. It's all within more or less okay uh, bounds. When we uh, use the same plot to um, look at the running average of those with 1000 samples, you can see that it uh, stabilizes pretty quickly. And this is uh, compared to what we had before with the important sampling only. You saw those uh, wild jumps, you see them again. And this looks much better. So we are happy. And this is the basic intuition and approach. You can look into this, these papers. They uh, contain a long treatment on how to choose the relative weighting, etc. And they have a lot more theory uh, behind it. Feel free to experiment with different strategies, uh, for instance, with the power heuristic or in the papers, there are also some other heuristics in your assignments. Okay, that's it with Monte Carlo. And next time we will uh, see, we will take a look at the rendering equation. So this will, the, uh, this will be the actual thing that we want to integrate. All of uh, the stuff that we made until now is just for preparation to understand how to integrate this rendering equation and further how the path tracing algorithm uh, will work, which we'll have in, in the lecture after the rendering equation. 
there are some reading links again and uh, you will be able to check them out in the slides on our homepage. Thank you.